<laughs> Good morning, folks. Didn't mean to cough in your ears. <laughs> hey, listen, we have got a lot of stuff to talk about today and not a lot of time. I'm going to tell you this right now. There's a lot happening. I want to talk about a lot of the things that are coming our way. We are going to talk about some of the crazy stories that are happening right now, but the premise of our whole discussion centers around the fact that the White House continues to up its attacks on Christianity, and strangely and oddly enough, it would appear as though Christians just seem to let it happen, like it's no big deal. There's nobody uh, talking about this. There's nobody calling for a repudiation of it. There's no discussion uh, that I'm hearing on much of a, a level of any real significance where anybody's really making a big stink about it. But the reality of it is there are much bigger issues here that are at the core of this, that are at the foundation of it, and we are going to talk about it. And as a matter of fact, there is a very, very interesting video that I'm going to play for you. And some of you may have caught it. Some of you may have not. Um, one of them involves uh, Tucker Carlson interviewing Marjorie Taylor. And what's interesting about that interview, and I think it's really important to point this out, is that Marjorie Taylor makes some very astute observations concerning uh, Mike Johnson the Speaker of the House. Now, I'm going to go somewhere with this because this is going to speak into the issues that we have been talking about on a regular basis. So I think this is really important. And by the way, I also think it's critically important to stop for a moment and reflect upon where all of this started and why it's going in the direction that it is going in. Now, before we get started on this, and folks, I've got a lot of stories to go over uh, to help sort of build out on this point, right? Um, I think it's really important that we talk about this. Um, let me just tell you what inspired this, and then we're going to get into the biblical precedent for why we need to look at this differently, and the Bible gives us all of this information, and then we'll sort of build out the picture of what's really going on, and I can make you this promise your eyes will be opened on many levels if you just stop and look at the totality of everything that's being communicated. Now, before we do that, I do want to bring in, uh, for just a few of you guys, a big thank you on uh, the Super Chats and the Super Stickers. They mean a lot, and they go a very long way in helping us and supporting us, and so I would definitely appreciate that. Oh, I do appreciate that. Let me read a few of them. Sherry Francis, thank you so much. Brad Brun, I'm, you know, it's really funny. I, Brad, you'll know what I mean when I say this. Most people won't because it's kind of an inside thing, but I really, really, really wanted to jump in on your Monday morning call with the guys uh, just to talk to you face-to-face because -face I have not been able to do that uh, because you're quite the witty one. I can just tell you that right now. But anyway... Uh, Brad, thank you. You say, so Gavin Newsom or Gavin Grusom, I have to read it correctly. So Gavin Grusom is raising minimum wage to $20 per hour. And in two years, $25 an hour. I am curious, does Gavin own a black horse? He rides and a set of scales. Yeah. So that's a very, very valid and astute joke. But let me just tell you something that isn't funny with respect to this, and it actually goes into the conversation that we're going to have today, and that is when a nation turns to unrighteousness and walks away from the true and living God, they accompany that action with a series of really, really, really bad decisions, and the nation begins to see a downfall. Now, We've talked about this. I've already spoken about this on a whole bunch of levels, but this was targeting fast food restaurants. And it makes sense that we are uh, frustrated, I think. A lot of people are frustrated by how the prices are going up, but it is the government that is forcing those prices to go up. Folks, did you know? And yes, I did the numbers. I actually looked into this. I heard it somewhere, and then I went and looked at it just to vet it to make sure that I was not wrong. Did you know that if you were going to buy an average hamburger meal in 2014, 2014 at McDonald's, I think it was a uh, quarter pounder meal, 
you are going to spend close to $6. No joke, $6. Today, that same meal is almost $12. McDonald's is number one in reflect or respect to the reflection of inflation on costs. It's really funny because when you think about it, it is a literal function of what is going on with the government and what's actually happening there. Now, some people might say that's a blessing in disguise because people will stop eating McDonald's. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to make myself very, 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 very clear. There's a lot of people that will never stop eating McDonald's. But that's not the point. The point isn't to complain about how expensive fast food is. The point is to demonstrate the problem with sin when people are being given to it, right? So uh, it's, a, it's a very, very important picture, okay? Now, um, I also want to say this because I think it's really important. A lot of people will justify the behavior of this level of um, forced labor costs by simply saying, well, that food is bad for you anyway, so you don't want to, you don't, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't eat it anyway. Well, the problem is, is let's just say you buy into that philosophy or you buy into that idea, you are still, for the sake of trying to make people healthier, which in reality, I have news for you. People that eat at McDonald's are going to still eat at McDonald's. People will go into debt to eat at McDonald's if they're eating at McDonald's. But that's beside the point. The issue here is they are seeking to take away freedom. They are seeking to take away people's basic and fundamental right to make decisions for themselves, right? There's a bigger issue here at stake. And we're going to talk about that because that's the whole reason for what we're doing on the show. And I'll talk about what inspired that in just a second. By the way, uh, Risa Krause, this is your very first time. What a blessing. Thank you. Uh, you say thank you for all you do and your encouragement with the word. Well, thank you for your support. You are absolutely amazing. Uh, we got a bunch of super chats coming in. Richard, Speedy, thank you so much. Uh, total blessing. Uh, Dolores Valera, thank you so much. Uh, you are awesome. You guys are you guys are such a blessing. I, I'm very thankful for your support and the love that you continue to show us. Again, it always means a lot on a lot of levels. And it's something that we do not go, it does not go unnoticed. So I want to thank you for all of that. Okay. So let's get into this because we are going to play a few videos of particular interest to you. We'll do that in just a second, and I'll explain some of this stuff. We'll go somewhere with it, okay? And one of them in particular, it'll be the first one that I play, is perhaps going to be one of the most interesting for a lot of reasons. And I'll explain that in just a second. But with that said, before we get into it, we have to get into a passage that I think is really important. Why? Because the premise of the foundation that we establish needs to be founded in the word, because if it's not founded in the word, then we're going to have a much bigger problem, okay? And I think it's really important that we understand that. It's really, 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 really important, okay? So we find ourselves at Deuteronomy 28. I want to go there for just a second. Dean, thank you so much. For your support, supporting veterans, you say, how would, uh, how would like to pray for you? <laughs> oh, that's really funny. D Dean is such a crack up. It's funny. By the way, for those of you that don't know supporting veterans, and I don't know whether or not Dean has already done it yet, but he's auctioning that quilt that Miss Monkey made, Right. So I don't know when that's happening, Dean. Maybe you could give us a heads up on that, and I'll be happy to announce that so that we can get people out your way uh, over there. I think that's a, a really important cause. And, you know, Miss Monkey is a brilliant surgeon. So the idea that she had the time to put this quilt together is pretty remarkable. I think that's a pretty, uh, a pretty cool thing to see that. And it speaks volumes, first of all, of the kindness of Monkey's heart and his family's heart and the, and the love that they have for not only vets, but just the people of God, but it also speaks of the fact that these people believe in the ministry of supporting our veterans, which I think is really awesome. So we, that's a kind of a little side note, but Dean uh, kind of reminded me of that. And Dean's a blessing. He's part of our research team, which is a very important part of what we do here because we do a lot. So it is important. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into this because this is critical. Now, we have to talk about the book of Deuteronomy for just a second. 
because we're going to be in Deuteronomy 28, and I'm going to read parts of it for you. I think it's really important to read parts of it. And we're going to go somewhere, and I think it's like really, really, really critical that we see this, okay? Like we cannot ignore it, all right? First and foremost, before I read this section in Deuteronomy, the one thing that I have to do is give you a little bit of history or a little background about the book of Deuteronomy. This is something that I have been thinking about a lot, especially in context with the things that are in front of us and what we've been facing as of late. So it's good to rehearse this a little bit. Now, Deuteronomy has oftentimes, incorrectly by the way, been referred to as the book of the second law, okay? Because what happens in Deuteronomy is you see a, re a reiteration of the existing law of God and a lot of people look at that and say, well, this is another book of the law. Of course it is. But they refer to it as the second law. When in reality, what this actually is, is almost a ratification of the law that was given to the people of Israel through Moses by God. And what happens in Deuteronomy is Moses is about to die and he knows he's about to die. He knows his time is up. This is something that we've talked about, by the way, a lot. We've talked about the fact that time is a limited resource. And if we um, remember to understand that and continue to view our time as being a limited resource, we'll actually do better in, in all kinds of other areas, right? And, and it affects everything. It not only affects our uh, financial situations, it affects our the way we live. It affects how we treat the our walks with God. It affects so many different things. And so you have to understand the value of time and why time is something that you just can't get back. And so we have to learn to leverage other things in order to preserve our time. It's very important. I'm going to mute the microphone for just one second. If I did not unmute that, if I, if I left that unmuted, that would not have been a pleasant sound. Anyway... And I've been meaning to do that from the beginning of the show. So here is the thing with Deuteronomy. When Deuteronomy was written, it was in essence, Moses knowing he's about to die and understanding that he needed to leave something very valuable for the people of Israel. It was, it was very critical that that happened, right? Extraordinarily critical. He knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that there were things that they needed to take home with them and keep with them forever. Very, very critical, very, very important. He made it very clear, very, very clear that the law of God was something that could not be taken lightly. Moses knew that he didn't have a lot of time on the earth. He was 120 years old. Like literally, he writes these words, provides them for the people of Israel knowing that his last words were going to be the ones that were likely going to be valued the most. And he wanted to give them wisdom as he was on his way out of this earth. It's very important. This was a man who'd been through a lot. This was a man who'd been through the suffering that was oftentimes associated with a lack of obedience. This was a man who actually was never able to step into the promised land that God had told him or told the people that they would step into because of Moses' disobedience. It's very important that we understand all this, right? So being a man who was a, a, a tremendous leader, who had made a whole bunch of mistakes, he wanted to give valuable insight to the people that he was talking to. So Deuteronomy chapter 28 comes into play. Now, the thing about Deuteronomy chapter 28 is it does something very, very unique. In a very graphic and emphatic way, it talks about the blessings of obedience to God and then the curses that oftentimes go with not obeying God. Both completely important things to stop and consider. It's really, really easy, really, 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 really easy to think that you can get away with disobeying God because you don't see an immediate consequence. This is something that happens a lot and it's prominent in the minds of a lot of people. The problem with that way of thinking, and it is a serious problem. Believe me when I say this, the problem with that way of thinking 
centers around the idea that whether or not you feel like you can get away with it, you will always experience the consequence of rebellion towards God. Jesus demonstrated to us how important it is to walk in obedience to the Father. Jesus did that. He himself being God, he still walked in obedience to the Father in heaven. He didn't go to the cross as we talked about on Friday. He didn't go to the cross willingly. He went to the cross obediently. He even told the Father, hey, listen, if this cup can pass from me, let it pass. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but thy will be done. So we know that Christ went to the cross obediently and did not go to the cross willingly. We know that. So fundamentally, the subject of obedience is a critical one. There are consequences for rebellion. By the way, it's interesting if you analyze this to the most significant variable that exists, and that is we, well, let me back up for just a second before we even get into that portion of the analysis, right? Let's just talk about why God issues commands to us, okay? Because this one is not difficult. This is not a difficult issue to plow through, especially if right now in the moment you stop to contemplate what historically have been the benefits of obedience to the Lord, you realize very quickly that God issues commands because he wants us to be benefited from those commands. And anytime I find anybody lacking in any area of their life, I oftentimes start at the lowest, sort of the easiest hanging fruit, right? And the low hanging fruit in situations where people just struggle and struggle and struggle or don't seem to be getting anything right is this question. Are you obeying God fully in your life? Are there areas you are not giving to him? Are you seeking him? Are you putting him first? Are you walking in obedience? Almost every single time when people come to me with difficulties, they come back to me and say, no, I'm not obeying in this area or I'm not obeying in that area or I'm not being consistent here or I'm not being consistent there. And every single time I have to come back with the same answer that basically says, listen, listen, you need to get that aligned because if you get that aligned, then you will experience the obedience of your ben uh, the benefits of your obedience. And you will find yourself in a place where you won't even need to talk to me because you will experience the type of victories you never thought you could experience. And by the way, this works also on a practical level, on a very practical level. This could be something that deals with finances. It could be something that deals with a family uh, issue that you're trying to navigate through. It could be an issue, a breakthrough you're trying to have with your business. It could be something that's going on at your job or in your education pursuits. Everything centers around whether or not you are obeying the Lord. It's very important that we understand that. Moses knew that, which is why Moses writes what he writes. And we'll get into that in just a second. By the way, D.L. Rich, thank you so much. Uh, you say, blessings to you and your family. Please pray for the salvation of my in-laws, Nancy and David. Thank you, folks. Let's make sure we pray for Nancy and David. We'll, we'll do that at the end, by the way, as well. Dale, if you can uh, remind me to do that. And let's put Nancy and David on our prayer chain so that people can pray. Also, uh, thank you so much, uh, Hutch66. You're awesome. Thank you. This is your first time, by the way, I think, because I don't, I don't remember your name ever doing a super chat, but thank you so much. You're a true blessing. You say thank you for your continued teachings, James. You're awesome. Thank you. Okay, so let's go back. Let's, tur let's turn around for just a second. And let's talk about these commands. God gives them to us because he wants to see us blessed. It is not God's desire for us to be people who are broken as a result of our disobedience. There's two types of brokens. One, I said there's two types of brokens. It's really funny. There's two types of broken. The first type of broken is the one where you allow yourself to be broken because of the fear of God, and in that brokenness, God elevates you. That's always a really important one. That's the first one. The second one, and the one that is, which by the way, the first one is a desirable one, right? 
Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he'll lift you up. The second brokenness is the kind of brokenness that comes when you disobey God and you experience the consequence of the disobedience. Very important that we point this stuff out, right? By the way, this is interesting. I, I will disrupt what I'm about to say with a comment that uh, Haley McNeet writes, uh, Haley McNett writes, and I think it's such a, 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 a true statement, right? I just saw it pop up in the comments and very rarely do I see it pop up like that way or pop up like that, but I just figured, man, if I can see it now, maybe, maybe I'm meant to read it. But this is what Haley says. Haley says, I'm a former IV drug user and alcoholic redeemed by Jesus. Obedience is so important and is definitely a process. Something I pray for daily. Thank you for all your due. What, I, listen, such an important and profound statement, a very profound statement by Haley when she says this. It is definitely a process, something that she prays for daily. Folks, do you understand the significance of making a statement like that? That's really, really critical. I hope you guys understand the value of a statement like that. It's not just a one item happens, one moment, one situation, and then all of a sudden, you're obedient all as well. No, it's an ongoing process. Thank you, Haley, by the way. Very insightful. This is interesting, by the way. You know, as I've been spending a lot of time getting into our mindset series, and I've been talking about this a lot, I'm beginning to realize that words matter in ways I never thought they mattered. Like, for example, I don't even call it alcoholism anymore. I call it drunkenness. There's a reason why God called it drunkenness, right? Very interesting stuff. We're going to talk about all of this. But I, I love statements like that. I really do. Brad, we will take your prayer request, and we will also put it uh, on the prayer chain. You say, please pray for my son and my daughter, Isaiah and Aria. They have been uh, missing for over three years now. My children went missing right in the middle of the sexual assault and physical abuse investigations. That's something we definitely need to pray for. So Brad, we're going to do that. I just saw it and I couldn't ignore it. I mean, not that I want to ignore anything that comes in, but that's just so heavy. We'll make sure that we put that on there, Brad. God bless you and we'll, we'll definitely pray. And Lord willing, we'll get an awesome praise report, right? We'll know that something has changed. Uh, Sonia Grask, thank you so much. And we do pray for Israel. You know, every single night I pray for Israel. That's a normal thing. We do it when we pray together as a family. It's really, really important that we do things like that. Really, really critical. Okay. So we know obedience is important. God has shown us that on so many levels, it's not even funny. So how about we do something interesting? How about we talk about what the Bible tells us? This is Moses that's writing in Deuteronomy 28. Let's talk about what happens when we obey God. How about that? I'm not even going to read all of them. I'll just read some sample readings. But this is really interesting. Okay? Let me start from verse 1 of Deuteronomy chapter 28. <clears throat> it says this. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. By the way, this is something that definitely can apply to you as an individual. But the context of this actual proclamation that Moses is making is to the nation of Israel. Now, you might immediately say, okay, James, this is the nation of Israel. What does it matter to me? Why in the world should I even be thinking about it? Especially because on a national level, we're in terrible shape. Two reasons. Number one, the Bible makes it very, very clear that Israel was designed by God to be an example to the rest of the nations. So when you see God giving Israel a command with respect to their righteousness and the way they ought to be living, we should be paying attention to it because God's expectations for Israel was premised upon the idea that this is what God wanted to establish for as a model for all the rest of the nations. So we know that when a nation follows God and seeks God, they're blessed by God. And when they don't, they're cursed. So that's the first reason. The second reason is we're called to do it. God says it. God says that we are obligated as people who are citizens 
in a specific country to take care of that country. It's real simple. Not a very difficult thing to understand. So all of these things will happen as a blessing. Let me just read a few of them, right? Blessed shall be you in the city, and blessed shall be you in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Is it here that God is actually saying that if you walk in obedience to him, part of the blessing that he will give to you is a blessing that is associated with riches? Let me make myself very, very clear. This is not a health and wealth discussion here. There is no health and wealth discussion involved in this. This is a simple product of obedience. You walk in obedience to God, you will likely put yourself in a position where you think differently from the rest of the world. And if you think differently from the rest of the world, especially in the way you manage your finances, you will be blessed by God. If you honor God in any area of your life, that area of your life will be blessed. Problem is most people don't honor God with their finances. If they honored God with their finances, they would experience the blessing of God in their finances. They don't honor God in their finances. They don't do the basics. They don't tithe. They don't take the time to understand the difference between what an asset might be or what an expense might be. They don't recognize how to leverage all of that information to be able to use money as a tool to free up your time to do what God is asking you to do. There's a lot and a lot and a lot of issues to speak to here. But he says it. Fruit of your body, the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face and they shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. I love that. This is one of my favorite ones. They're going to come out against you one way. They're all going to run in seven different directions. That speaks of an absolutely scared enemy, right? And it goes on, by the way, to give us blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing after blessing for a total of 14 verses. You obey God, you'll be blessed in these areas. Here's the thing that really scares me. It starts at verse 15 by saying this. But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of God, the, the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, then all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. <coughs> by the way, one variable I should bring up, and that is this. Both in the obedience and disobedience camp, Geneva Gardner, by the way, thank you. In the obedience and disobedience camp, you get this. You say, what? Notice this. Diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today. That means you are spending time to very carefully study the word of God to know and understand how it applies in your life. See, the problem that people have when they read the Bible is they read it just to read it because they, 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 they know that they're supposed to read it and they look at it as, a, as another task. Oh, I'll feel better about myself if I read through one chapter or I'll feel better about myself if I, re if I read through eight chapters. But that's not what the Bible is saying here for the blessing. What, what it's saying here is, and by the way, if you don't do this, you'll be cursed. Notice, let me read verse 15 to you. But it shall come to pass that if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully his commandments and his statutes will I command you this day, then all these curses will come upon you. So we don't just read the Bible. What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to observe carefully what his commandments are. Observe carefully. Very important. And not only do we observe carefully his commandments, but what are, what, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to obey his voice. Diligently obey. Not just simple obedience, diligent obedience. In other words, you make it your absolute goal to in every way obey God. You be diligent in your decision to obey God. That's the, that's the goal here, right? 
Now watch this, because this is interesting, okay? Verse 15. I just read it. And it starts going over the curses. Let me read some of the curses. Curses shall you be in the city. Curses shall be you be in the country. Curses shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Curses shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your hand, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. In other words, you will financially be, you'll be cursed. You'll be cursed on every level. You will become a poorer nation. America has become a very poor nation on a whole bunch of levels in many ways. Curses shall you be when you come in and curses shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you cursing, confusion, and rebuke in you or in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. By the way, I could go on reading curse and curse and curse and curse and curse and curse. And it takes you from verse 16 in curses, actually verse 15 in curses, all the way to verse 68. Think about that for a second. The Bible made it clear that if we don't obey the voice of God, there will be a consequence for not being obedient. There's a massive consequence for it. You wonder why we've got problems in this country? I'll tell you why we've got problems in this country. Because this country is ruled by a contingency of men and women whose whole goal is to walk in functional and open disobedience and rebellion to the things of God. Some of you may or may not know this, but Mike Johnson, who is the Speaker of the House, it's kind of funny how this works. When he became the Speaker of the House, a lot of people thought, oh, wow, this is great. I did. I thought, man, he's a Christian, and he seems to be a very solid Christian. Like, this is going to be great for us. I didn't stop to think for just one second that this is the devil's world. And if somebody who appears to be that sold out ends up in the house as the leader, there's got to be a problem. Something's wrong. Well, I want you to watch a portion of an interview between Marjorie Taylor and Tucker Carlson. And this is going to speak to something very critical here. We'll get into it in just a second. But... Let's watch this because th this is going to speak literal volumes to the issue that's in front of us. This is her talking about Mike Johnson. Pretty important. Let's, uh, let's watch. Mike Johnson has um, completely changed his character in a matter of about five months after he has become Speaker of the House. Mike Johnson is a Christian. By the way, here's the, here's the question that I have. Has he changed his character or was his character always the same? I don't know. And I'm not, not going to know. But something has something has gone wrong. We do know that. Anyway. Uh, he, he called himself a conservative, always has been. Um, he's, he's a Republican member. But yet here we are after the minibus was passed just, just almost two weeks ago in Washington. And now with the $60 billion going to uh, a war in Ukraine that Americans, 70% of Americans do not support it. That's the most recent polling. 70% of Americans and the majority of our majority of Republicans do not support funding Ukraine. People want to see a peace deal in Ukraine, not murdering more Ukrainians and more Russians. This needs to end. But no, Mike. Yeah, but <coughs> let me also bring this up as well, because this is really, really important. Yes, Americans want to see an end to what's going on in Ukraine. A lot of people do. They don't want to give more money to Ukraine. When you give more money to Ukraine, you're giving more money to corruption. You're giving more money to a bunch of evil nonsense that we continue to see happening. You're actually, by giving money to Ukraine, you are enabling all kinds of insane wickedness. All kinds of insane wickedness on levels that you can't even begin to imagine. Why? Because the leader of Ukraine is an evil man. Putin's not a good guy either. I'm going to make myself very, very clear. But we are giving money to a country that continues to be one of the greatest contributing variables to so much wickedness that we're seeing in the region and around the world. Yet the United States of America has no problem giving that money away. None. Let me just say this. 
The Biden regime has no problem giving that money away. And now Mike Johnson has changed his view with respect to Ukraine. And we know that he has because of the spending bill that he pushed through. Very important we, that that get pointed out. And I know that a lot of people think that Marjorie's crazy. I'm not here to focus on uh, validating Marjorie's words. I'm here to focus on the truth that's actually being spoken. And she is not speaking incorrectly here. Really critical. Johnson has, has made a complete departure of who he is um, and what he stands for. And to the point where people are literally asking, is he blackmailed? I mean, th th look, look at this. Why in the world is Mike Johnson sitting down and having a conversation with Zelensky? What, what is Mike Johnson thinking? When, when the former Speaker of the House left, Nancy Pelosi was doing the exact same thing. She was worshiping Zelensky. And she was feeding the military industrial complex that continues to feed into destroying the lives of innocent people, not just in Ukraine, but all over the region. Don't get me started on this. This is crazy. Folks, this is absolutely crazy. Th this, is, this is beyond a lot of people's capacity to be able to fully reconcile, including my own. I mean, how in the world can you compute the amount of savagery that's gone on so far and the devastating effects of it all? And Mike Johnson has no problem sitting with him and having this conversation? Fine, Mike. It's your prerogative, but don't tell me you're being led by the Lord. Don't make statements like that and get stupid. Sorry. What is wrong with him? Because right. he's completely disconnected with what we want. Do you think he is being blackmailed? I have no idea. I, I can't comprehend, Tucker, what radically changes a man. I mean, if we break yes. down the, the second part of basically an omnibus, let's, let's break that down. So Mike Johnson is, is pro-life. In the second part of the omnibus, just less than two weeks ago, he funded full-term abortion clinics. Full-term abortion clinics. Do, do you hear that? Do, do you guys hear that? The Speaker of the House, who used to be so-called anti-abortion, has now chosen to put a bill in front of the people that get signed that funds full-term abortion. Mike Johnson is a bloody mess. People got mad at Charlie Kirk when Charlie Kirk called Mike Johnson out early. People got mad at me when after a few months I started calling Mike Johnson out. Now it's coming out that he supports full-term abortion. Now, he might come to me and say, I absolutely resent that. How dare you say something like that? I don't support it. You do with your actions. You could tell me that you so, you're a pro-lifer till you're blue in the face. But just like the clown that tried to run for the governor position in the state of California, if you contributed to the writing, the signing, or the execution of a bill that funds abortion then you are, in essence, pro-abortion. I don't care what you think or what you say. The reality of it is you will never catch me ever signing my name to a bill that funds abortion. It's just absolutely crazy. It's, it's nuts to think about that. Absolutely nuts. But this is a man who has lost his functional mind. But this goes back to the same issue that we've been talking about, right? When you take your eyes off of Jesus, the persecution towards Christians becomes more viable. 
Why? Because God judges that nation by giving the nation the sin that they want. And when the nation gets the sin that they want, the righteous that are in that nation begin to suffer. Oh, don't worry. If you're righteous and you're suffering because of your stand in righteousness, God's got your back and eventually you will be absolutely, listen, 100%, you will be exonerated. That will happen. This is heavy stuff, folks. Todd H., wow, this is your first time on a Super Chat. Thank you. That's uh, very generous of you. You say, I've been below the poverty level all my life. I have recently started to collect uh, some money, and I want to be honoring to God. First time giver. Thank you, James, for speaking the truth. Todd, thank you so much. Bro, take what God has given you as you have increased. And God has blessed you. Take that and use it to glorify him, right? Just just go for it. It's important. And I would highly advise you to start watching the Mindset series that I've been teaching through on Sunday nights. We'll uh, put the link out to the Calvary Chapel Single Hill Live YouTube page. If you have not done so already, please go over there and subscribe. It's really important because my live Bible study teaching is where, that's where I do the live Bible study teaching, the church service teaching. And that mindset series that we're going over is awesome. As a matter of fact, Sunday we start the the first of a three-part series on the subject of money and the Christian mindset for it. But this is critical, right? Right? This is super critical. By the way, Golden Bear, I totally agree with you. Matthew 7, 17 through 18 here applies, right? A good tree can't bear bad fruit. When you see bad fruit, you got a bad tree. And I, look, I I will take this a little bit further than some other people might be taking it. There's a reason why Mike Johnson got put in as the Speaker of the House. My initial thought was, the reason was, God placed him to do amazing things and for lives to be changed. And that might very well be the case. But somehow, Mike Johnson has lost his way. How in the world do you do that? What were you thinking? See, this is the thing that people don't get. You might be thinking, wait, how does a security bill for Ukraine, have anything to do with abortion. It does. Because when they write these bills, folks, it isn't just what they want it to be for. Oh, we're giving $60 billion to Ukraine for border security. Okay, fine, whatever. You don't care about your border. That's your choice, whatever. But in that $60 billion, you're going to have appropriations being made for all kinds of things. A bridge that leads to nowhere, Research on African lesbianism, you know, whatever it might be. Some of the craziest, most insane things you'll see in these paper, in these papers. One of the things is going to go to funding and building clinics that facilitate full-term abortion. Which basically is infanticide. Let's let's just get real. This is wicked. How can Mike Johnson live with himself and allow this? I don't know. But again. The increase in persecution that we are seeing in the United States of America and the White House chasing after Christians, <coughs> it makes it obvious. You know what inspired this? the title of this show today, by the way? What Biden did on Easter. On Good Friday, he signs a declaration that basically says that the 31st of March, which was Easter, will be a day dedicated to transgenderism. Okay, here's a problem. People come to me and they say, well, James, you're grossly misinformed because this has been something that's been signed for years and years and years and years. Okay, well, you're grossly misinformed. And let me show you how grossly misinformed you actually are. Let me show you how absolutely brainwashed you've allowed yourself to become. This was not a national holiday that was declared, folks. This isn't something where a date was set a long time ago and put into motion to allow it to be again and again and again. Every single year, you have to sign the same declaration. Every single year. Joe Biden, with the swap of a pin, 
could have changed the date, but he didn't. Or his handlers didn't. Terrible move, by the way. That's not going to reflect well on the Democratic Party. And then when the White House is confronted over it, what do they do? They double down. And on Easter Sunday, instead of saying glory be to God, they talk about the resurrection of Christ. They talk about the fact that we have hope because Jesus has risen. There's none of that. It's we see you. We affirm you. We believe in you. As a matter of fact, as shameful as it might be for me to do this, let me go over to the White House. Okay? And by the way, if you think that that isn't a big deal, <laughs> let me explain why it's, it's just absolutely crazy. Right? Oh, that's funny. They may have actually taken it down. That is really, really funny. I think the White House actually took it down. They just got pictures up of the Easter Bunny. They took down what they put because it backfired on them so badly. No, they haven't. No, I found it. It's right here. By the way, the date that they put this up, Easter, Easter Sunday, right? Now, here's the thing. Easter comes up, and let me say, Resurrection Sunday. What does the White House do? Here it is. Happy Easter. Two words. Right here. Happy Easter. Happy Easter from the Biden-Harris administration. Are you out of your mind? But they can do Happy Easter, and that's it. That's all they give to people that are Christians. But then they say this. Watch this. This is on Easter they write this. This is a graphic. It's pathetic. Today, we send a message to all transgender Americans. You are loved. You are heard. You are understood. You belong. What do you want to tell all Christians? Forgive the lingo. You want to tell all Christians go to hell? What, what is it? What message do you have for believers? Look at what they write here. I don't even think that Biden knows how to spell to the level of this. His handlers write this. Remember, what was the message for Christians? Happy Easter. No mention of a Christian holiday. None. None. This is what he writes. Transgender Americans are part of the fabric of our nation. On Transgender Day of Visibility, our administration honors the extraordinary courage of transgender Americans and reaffirms our nation's commitment to forming a more perfect union where all people are treated equally. What about Christians? Look at some of the comments. I'm just going to read the first 10 comments that came. You are evil and not well of mind. 365, this is comment number two. 365 days in a year and you have to post this garbage on Easter. L look at this. These are all people that are that are uh, adding to this, saying amen, 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 amen. That right there, amen, amen, amen. What are they saying amen to? <clears throat> 365 days in a year and you have to post this garbage. This is on the White House Instagram. 81 million votes, yet not a single comment on this entire Instagram supports this clown. These are comments. I'm reading comments. Some of these are just like, I can't even read them because they're so absolutely vulgar. 
in their expression of disapproval for the White House. It, it, it's absolutely crazy. I can't, I can't even read the first sentence of this. But let me read this comment. It's a clown show and a circus. Jesus did not teach accepting delusion and mental illness or the lies that a man can become a woman. These are, these are comments. These are comments, folks, that people are writing. <laughs> Here's one. I'm, I'm reading them all in a row, by the way. I'm not even skipping over any of them. I'm just reading all the ones in a row. Thanks for showing your true intentions. This administration is a joke. And then there's a bunch of people going, amen, 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 amen. Adding all kinds of statements. Next comment. It's unbelievable how hard you suck. This, this one, this one's really funny to me. It's the next comment. April Fool's Day is tomorrow. I love this one. This one I could really, really appreciate. This is the next comment. What about the slain NYPD officer whose funeral you didn't show up to or his family you never even called? You are the biggest joke of a president we have ever had in this country. We know you didn't show because you know that nobody wanted you there. They would have told you to leave just as they did Kathy Hochul. So true, by the way. Governor of New York, get lost. Here's another one. I'm reading them in order, by the way. And by the way, every single one I'm reading is like 96 replies, 100 replies, 200 replies, all amen, 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 amen. Funny how you don't mention our Lord and Savior on this holy day. You and your administration are despicable. Here's another one. I'm just reading them one after the other. I'm not skipping. I'm just reading the natural progression of comments. On Easter, the holiest of holy days around the world, and you do this. You are not a Catholic. You are a despicable human being. You could have picked 363 other days because Christians wouldn't be accepted, wouldn't, wouldn't be acceptable either, but no. Instead, you chose to desecrate the most holy of days. You can't say you're a Christian and vote Democrat anymore. Wow. And as far as trans go, God loves you. But you are not entitled to take over this day. No one is. Wow. I think that's a very astute comment. Here's the next one. I'm not skipping any comments. I'm just reading them one after the other. No. Today is the day our Lord and Savior rose. God laughs when evil schemes. This entire administration will face him one day. Until then, praying for your souls. Holy smokes. Here's another one. I'm just reading one after the other. What is this administration's ob uh, obsession with gender dysphoria? Here's another one. I'm just reading one after the other. Biden is working for Satan. Perverts who hate Jesus speak against Easter. Here's the next one. Jesus Christ is king. He has risen. Happy Easter Sunday. The next comment is a picture of Trump, little animation going wrong. Next comment, Biden demonizing America. Next comment, you mean happy resurrection day. Next comment, I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone. This must be the biggest joke in the world. Serious slap in the face to all Christians in the world. What a shame. It's amazing when you think about this. By the way, just so that you know, I haven't done the analysis, but I will take an AI tool that I have to look at this. But there are 14,691 comments, and I would bet you if it's consistent with the first 15 or 20 that I read to you, virtually all of them are expressing displeasure in this ridiculous White House. It's, it's just ridiculous. These people are a complete joke. But their persecution of Christians is increasing, folks. Folks, I'm not joking. I'm absolutely not joking. It's just funny, by the way, too. I think that if we spent the time to go look at some of the comments that were made, 
by the former president when he was in office, especially on a day like Easter, it would be we give glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but no one wants to talk about it. And then here's the other thing that gets really interesting, right? You take that open and blatant dishonoring of God and the increase in persecution of Christians, and then you throw a story like this out. CIA warns Iran will attack Israel within 48 hours as revenge for consulate strike. Wasn't even the consulate that was destroyed, by the way. That's a whole other issue. But just follow with me here, folks. There has been a very de rapid departure from the things of God. Let's, let's listen to the rest of what Marjorie Taylor has to say here because this will go to prove my point. I can't believe how much time we've already passed. I like we've blown so much time already, but it's worthwhile talking about some of this stuff. It's critical, right? Like some of this stuff is stuff that we, like, it, it, we can't, it, it can't just be missed. You can't just ignore this stuff. This stuff is, is serious. Like super, super critical that we understand this. Okay, watch this. He funded the trans agenda on children. I mean, how does that even happen from a Christian conservative Republican speaker? Did you hear that? He funded the trans agenda on children. Mike Johnson, Christian speaker of the house who brags about his walk with the Lord. Shame on you, Mike Johnson. Shame on you. I'll say it on the record. Shame on you, Mike Johnson. Get your act together. Do not continue to embarrass the cause of Christ. Do not com continue to misrepresent our Lord. I'm embarrassed by the fact that I actually stood up for him. I'm embarrassed by the fact that I actually encouraged people to pray for what he's doing in Washington because what he's doing right now is contributing to the destruction and the cancer that we've seen formulate over the last few years. You claim to love Jesus, but you in essence have become a godless leader. He did nothing for the southern border, did nothing to secure the border. And this comes on the heels of Lake and Riley being brutally murdered. This came on the heels of a video that was running on loop on social media where illegal aliens had rushed our border, ran over Texas National Guard, ran over Border Patrol agents in order to invade our country. These were military aged men, by the way. And by the way, who brag about squatting and how to take control over an American's home that they worked their whole lives for. Wake up, Mike Johnson. There's a bigger picture here. We're going to talk about it in a second, but let's continue to listen. This, he did nothing to, nothing to secure a border. It's the number one issue in the world. He completely changed who he was, funded the FBI, gave him a brand new building, fully funded the Department of Justice that is persecuting everyone on the right and actually targeting our, our presidential candidate, uh, for for election this year, literally trying to put him in jail the rest of his life. We don't know who Mike Johnson is anymore, so there's no, t I, I can't comprehend it. I, 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 can, can I just rewind this for you guys? Because she she's not, what she's saying is not wrong. But listen to the totality of the statement she makes. Listen to this. Like, this is heavy. Listen. Ran over Texas National Guard, ran over Border Patrol agents in order to invade our country. These were military aged men, by the way. This, he did nothing. Listen to what you're about to hear. Listen to this. Nothing to, nothing to secure a border. It's the number one issue in the world. He completely changed who he was, funded the FBI, gave him a brand new building, fully funded the Department of Justice that is persecuting everyone on the right and actually targeting our, our presidential candidate uh, for for election this year, literally trying to put him in jail the rest of his life. What are you doing, Mike Johnson? You hold the purse strings. You're the Speaker of the House. When men who function at that level are willing to be the persecuting arm of the existing political power against another political opponent, you support it and you say you love Jesus? I don't know. Uh, 
Forgive me for asking this question, but what the heck is wrong with you, Mike Johnson? Have you lost your dang mind? Are you nuts? We don't know who Mike Johnson is anymore, so there's no, t I, I can't comprehend it. Well, I, do, I have noticed just from living in Washington for so long that a lot of the top decision makers are lying about their personal lives. And there's something, you know, really amiss there. Mm -hmm. um, and th I would definitely say a Mitch McConnell would be among those. And there does seem to be a connection between the creepiness of your personal life and the deception around your personal life and your willingness to vote with the other side. Do, do, do you hear what Tucker is saying? Tucker's observation is absolutely astute. Let, let me give you the biblical foundation for, for this assertion. <clears throat> the devil reveals his pattern on how he does his wickedness very quickly. Through the temptation of Christ in the wilderness. What does he do to Christ? After Christ had not eaten for 40 days, he goes to Christ and he says, look at this whole world. It's all yours if you'll bow down to me. And Jesus says, uh-uh, not doing it. Isn't that funny how that works? It, 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 when people tend to be successful in the political arena and all the other arenas that are out there, it's very, very likely they sold their soul to the devil. Tucker's making a very astute observation. A lot of these people don't just show up and rise to power so quickly unless some type of deal has been made with the devil. Look at what happened to Obama. Barack Obama was a, a labor organizer. And all of a sudden, he becomes the si se puede president that gets elected so quickly. Folks, this stuff, the devil owns this world right now. The title deed to the earth has not been taken back yet. So he's going to elevate his people. Think about that for a second. Cheryl Lintz, thank you so much. This is your first time doing this. Wow, what a generous, generous super chat for your first time. You say thank you and your admins for all you do. Blessings to all. Praise be to our Lord and Savior who blesses me and my family continuously. Amen to that. King's daughter, thank you so much. You say this is serious. Any thoughts on CERN? I love that question, by the way. You're going to get my thoughts on CERN on Friday. I'm going to talk about the eclipse tomorrow. I'm releasing a video. I'm talking about the eclipse. And I'm even talking about CERN being fired up again on the day of the eclipse. Talk about that. I'm kind of glad I read that comment because it kind of calmed me down just a little bit. Right? But what's he thinking? Did Mike Johnson sell his soul to the devil? Sure seems like it. Sure appears as though he made a Taylor Swift type of a deal. I, I don't know if Mike Johnson will ever hear what I'm saying. But I can tell you this right now. I hope that he will hear the cries of pastors like me and repent. God did not allow you to be put in this position, Mike Johnson, so that you can drop your pants and pee all over the country. It's ridiculous. I mean, have you noticed this at all? Absolutely. And I think it's something that the American people are extremely aware of because none of it makes sense. Yeah. How do you become Speaker of the House? And, and let's look at that. It's basically like there's establishment Washington um, runs like a company. We could call it the firm. Well, Mike Johnson just got promoted to senior partner at the firm because he has been obeying their every single demand. He funded the military. He funded the military industrial complex and everything that they want done. He funded Biden's open border invasion. He funded actions speak louder than words. Say whatever you want, Mike Johnson. 
I mean, I, like, I, this is this is so hard for me to like. I mean, my head wants to explode. Do, do you care about our country or do you hate our country? Do, do you care about the things of God or do you not care about the things of God? I just, it's just, it, I just, it, so, so much of this makes absolutely no sense. It's funny, by the way, how they called Alex Jones crazy for making statements like, these leaders that are so in on the front end of this are Satan worshipers or being influenced by Satan worshipers. If you're not worshiping God, who are you worshiping? Let's make ourselves very, very clear here. Mike Johnson, look, I have friends that are very close to Mike Johnson who say that that guy is the real deal. I wonder what they would say today. I wonder if they would say he's the real deal right now because he's somebody that nobody recognizes. I don't know how to pronounce this. Exreal tick, I think is what you say. You say, thank you for everything. Gre greetings from the Netherlands. God bless you. I have an aunt, by the way, that was born in the Netherlands. My uncle John, Dr. Cadiz, he married my aunt from the Netherlands. So we have a heart for that area, by the way. All right, here we go. <laughs> it's only the last 15 seconds of this, but it's it just... Ugh, listen. Did the Green New Deal, the climate agenda? He funded full term abortion clinics, the trans agenda on kids. He funded every single thing that the firm stands for and what they're trying to push on the rest of the world. This is the agenda for the rest of the world. And they are not, they're not hiding it one single bit. Uh, she's right. You know what's funny about Marjorie Taylor? People look at her and they call her a nut job, they call her crazy. I, I don't know what's so crazy about any of these assertions. I think she's right. She's not wrong about this, folks. She's not, there's, she's not wrong. It's just crazy. And now when you start looking at some of the, the stories that are in front of us right now, I'm going to go back to my original point. It talks about God cursing the country. L look, at, look at some of these headlines. Schumer vows bill after courts reject case shopping demand. Senate GOP, Biden has no force protection plan for Gaza Pier. This is an interesting thing on the, on the Gaza Pier thing. If you don't know what that story is all about, they want to build a pier off the coast of the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean coast of Gaza. A massive pier that goes all the way out a big distance so that big old ships can come in and deliver food for Gaza. Tell me how good that's going to work. A whole other story. If you don't know much about the Sixth Circuit case, by the way, where uh, in essence, there is a technicality represented in this case that keeps people from... Oh, there's so much legal discussion on this. The analysis on this is a bit... Let me just simply say this. With, without getting into this, you, you definitely are going to want to look at the Jeffrey Sutton case. That's in the Sixth Circuit. There, there's so much to talk about here. I would probably have to spend the next 25 minutes describing the background of this and why it's such a big deal, right? And why Chuck Schumer doesn't want this thing to be where it's beginning to go. They are using the legal system to take away your freedoms. And they want to do it and they want to work very, very hard to do it. They want to take away your freedoms. Uh, just so that you know, uh, so you understand why I even mentioned this. All of this has become a long-term strategy. Let me say that again. It has become a long-term strategy by the leftists to keep the court system from being what it was intended to be by our founding fathers. They are wanting to shape the judicial branch in order to be the most activist arm that they have to take away the freedoms of Americans and to, in essence, affect into cause their desires, as nefarious as they may be. I think the Supreme Court justices have done very, very well to fight this off. And if, the, if that Sixth Circuit case went to the Supreme Court, 
it would be upheld. Thank God, by the way. Whole other mess with that. How about this? This one is funny. How about the fact that right now utility officials are increasing the alarm? Like literally, wah, 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 over power shortages. Wait, hold on. You mean to tell me by 2030 you want to get rid of all fossil fuels? But you don't have the electricity to fuel the cars that you want to make? Which, by the way, the production of those batteries are far more damaging to the environment than anything any fossil fuel could ever do or ever has done in the last 30 years. Isn't that funny how that works? It, it, look at this. The Electric Reliability Council, Council of Texas, otherwise known as ERCOT, CEO Pablo Vega said it would take at least five years to plan and build new transmission infrastructure in Texas and up to 25 gigawatts of new power demand is growing faster than infrastructure upgrades. So you can upgrade the infrastructures until you're blue in the face. You will never be able to facilitate the power necessary. Officials are increasing warnings about the fast-growing demand on U.S. grids, primarily from exploding AI use data center construction, and declining power capacity. The very likely risk that Americans will be hit by both increasing costs for less energy and blackouts remain. Think about that for a second. Do you ever, did you ever think for a second their desire to eliminate fossil fuels had anything to do with your safety or a better world? It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the fact that I want to get you dependent on something that I can disable in a heartbeat if I needed to. If I needed to stop you from being able to travel, I've got it in place. Folks, my whole point is this, and I think it's really, really important for us to understand this. It's, like it, 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 it's just critical. It's beyond critical. It's super, super important to understand this. Okay? This is mega valuable stuff. Okay? Your freedoms are being taken away as a result as a result of a insatiable appetite for sin. Our country wanted unrighteousness and wanted wickedness. The people in our nation wanted that. And so God said, okay, you want it? You can have it. You, you, you love sin? You know what? Go ahead. Have at it. Enjoy the consequence of it. Because that's what you're about to experience. Folks, I'm not joking when I tell you this. I'm, I'm, uh, th th none of this is being said to effect into some kind of a, a position in your mind. That, you know, we should start getting paranoid and worried about the things going on around us. You, like, guys, this stuff is very real. And it's happening. It's taking place. And the whole result that amounts from it taking place is the condition that we are in right now. Like, people tell me all the time, well, James, if we didn't have the thing happen with that happened with the election, then, then we would have had Trump in office and then everything would have been better. Baloney. You can say whatever you want to say. But the reality of it is, God allowed it to happen. Now, do I think that we need to do something to stop any potential of any weirdness from happening? Yes. The more of us that show up and the more of us that vote, the better off we're going to be. I agree with that statement. I think if so many people show up and vote, it, it will make it impossible for any inappropriate things to be happening. The problem is that we have not bought into doing that. Guys, I look, I, here, this is so critically important to understand. God eventually allows or denies things based on his sovereignty. I'm not saying that that is a license for us to not care and to not fight. It's baloney to think that, 
oh, well, all of a sudden God is sovereign, so we, we shouldn't have to worry about this. That's baloney. But my point is this. What we're seeing happening right now with this Biden regime and all the other nonsense that we've been watching and observing, all the other uh, uh, wickedness that we've been seeing, look, pay attention to this, folks. Okay, because this is critical. Like, the, uh, pay attention to this. It's really, really critical, okay? God gave the United States of America what it wanted. God gave the United States of America whatever they wanted. They had an insatiable appetite for sin. America said, I want this. And God said, okay, if you want it, you can have it. Look, how many times in the Bible have we seen that kind of pattern emerge? Look what happened with Samuel. Samuel goes back again and again and again and again and again to the people, representing God. God says, I'm the only king that you need. And what do the people want? They go, I, I don't care. I want what I want. Give me what I want. Guys, <clears throat> I think you, 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 it's, you have to be kooky. You have to be nuts to think that this is not something that we did. We did this. Go back to Deuteronomy. Go back to Deuteronomy. It's right there. This is heavy stuff, folks. Look, I'm going to just tell you this. I'm going to make myself very, 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 very clear. We have to start speaking up about this stuff more and more. People come to me and they say, okay, James, well, look, you've delivered a very, very powerful and very, very convincing argument about these things. So what do I do? What's my call to action? Where do I move forward? How do I fix this? It's really simple. You walk with God as close as you possibly can. You start speaking loudly and boldly about these things. And you take advantage of every scope of influence that God has given you to work on changing minds and expanding on your obedience to God. And you let God do the rest. You let God do the rest. Because if you don't, we're going to have a bigger problem. It's that simple. All right. Before we pray, I want to bring this up. We are going to do a locals broadcast. I'm going to do it with Dale. We're going to have a lot of fun doing it. We'll do it for about 20 minutes. You don't want to miss out on that. We're going to have a candid conversation. If you guys have any questions, we'll take those questions. By the way, those of you that are supporting me on locals, thank you for doing it. My family is grateful. Every single time you support us on locals, it goes right to us. We are going to move to a, uh, a new... I guess for lack of a better term, a new support tool that I think you're going to love even more. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to offer opportunities to do small group Zoom calls, which I'm very, very looking forward to doing. And we're going to have a lot of fun doing those things and lots of other really cool things for the people that are supporting us. We're really excited about that. Very, very much looking forward to that opportunity. Anyway, with that, let's pray and ask the Lord to go before us. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to us, Lord. We thank you for the fact that you indeed always show up for us on a regular basis, and it is awesome. So, Father, thank you for all that you've done. We love you, Father. We look to you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, we love you. Keep fighting the good fight. We'll see you on Locals in about five minutes. God bless you.